Hi, it's Saqib Rahman, and welcome to the OrthoClips podcast series. This podcast is going to be on forearm fractures in adults, five things you need to start doing now. So the first thing is, image a joint above and below. I can't tell you how many times this doesn't get done. Or if you get imaging a joint above and below, you aren't really centered at the joint and subtle uh Subtle disruptions and uh, in, incongruities can go uh, missed. So, you know, we say image a joint above and below for everything, right? Uh, if you have a tibia fracture, image a joint above and below. If you have a humerus fracture, joint above, joint below. And there's good reason for it. But in the forearm, it's really critical. Why? Well, because we know that there's longitudinal instability in many cases. You, we know that Montagia and Galeazzi lesions exist. We know that if you break one bone, there can sometimes be a joint injury. Um, and sometimes you can get it if you break both bones. Um, so there are multiple articulations um, between the um, between the radius and the ulna, and uh, there is, it's a bit of a functional unit when you think about the forearm. Um, and if you don't, uh, carefully image a joint above and joint below, you're at risk for missing things. So I believe this is one of the quintessential cases when you uh, really have to be um, a little bit obsessive about this. So number two, be more anatomic with your reconstruction than with other long bones. So, you know, when we, we reconstruct long bone fractures, we say, you know, length, alignment, rotation, and it doesn't really matter so much how perfectly aligned those fragments are in the middle, right? So if you nail a femur fracture, uh, or if you bridge plate a humerus fracture, um, or, you know, if you X fix a tibia fracture, I mean, with all these methods and all these long bones, um, you know, you have to have reasonable bone contact, but um, you don't necessarily have to get diaphyseal fractures anatomic all the time. Now, I'm not saying that you have to with forearm fractures, but I do think because the forearm is a functional unit and, and many people uh, teach that you should reconstruct forearm fractures as if they're articular fractures. Well, it's not an articular fracture, but because the motion of the forearm, supination and pronation, is so dependent on the anatomic relationships of those two bones to each other. Um, there is a an axis of rotation uh, by which the radius rotates about the ulna that uh, disruption of that can lead to loss of that motion, right? So uh, you have to be really careful with bridge plating methods. Uh, and it's amazing, you know, when... Um, Many of us go to the AO Principles course, one of the pre-op planning uh, labs, and uh, you execute this uh, um, pre-op planning exercises on a forearm fracture, and you uh, compression plate one side, and you do bridge plating on the other side. So I'm not saying bridge plating is totally wrong. I'm saying in some injuries, it may be, uh, it, it could get you into trouble. So if, if you have Montasia lesions, and you bridge plate the ulna in such a way that you just don't have the radius in an anatomic enough position uh, to stay reduced at the um, radiocapitellar joint, uh, you'll have a problem. Um, in transverse fractures, um, when you do compression plating, you have to be real careful about very basic AO techniques like pre-bending your plates. Um, and again, it becomes especially important with Montasia and Galeazzi lesions where you don't get the osteosynthesis um, anatomic enough, you can end up with a joint subluxation. So be more anatomic with your reconstruction than with other long bones. Consider lagging butterfly fragments. Um, be very careful um, with, with your plating techniques that you're not... Uh, um, straightening the radial bow. Uh, there's a lot of examples I can give um, where this comes into play. Now, speaking about uh, Montasia lesions, it's important that 
you get the ulna as anatomic as possible um, to get the radius to reduce. And one thing we always teach is that if the radius doesn't reduce, check the ulna reduction. And if it's still not reducing, check the ulna reduction. Like something's not right with how you reduced and fixed the ulna. But that brings me to point number three um, out of the five things we need to start doing now, which is consider inspecting the radiocapitellar joint if your montagia lesion is not reducing at the radiocapitellar joint. Think about it. Uh, if you have got the ulna as good as possible, uh, it looks good, and you're still not reducing, you can have tissue interposition. The annular ligament can be trapped in the radiocapitellar joint, and this is a potential uh, cause for um, the radiocapitellar joint not reducing concentrically uh, with montagia lesion. So consider inspecting the radiocapitellar joint if it doesn't reduce in those injuries. Point number four, carefully check and document motion and images at the end of your case. So we know many of these fractures are operative, right? Especially in the in adult. So adult both bones fracture, adult radial shaft fracture um, are almost always operative cases. Um, so many of these are going to go to the OR. And when you go to the OR, be careful at the end of your case to check flexion and extension of the elbow and wrist, but also supination and pronation. Make sure that you're happy with it because it's not going to get any, um, it's, that joint motion is not going to improve postoperatively. If anything, it's going to get stiffer. And make sure there's no instability at the radiocapitellar joint and at the distal radial ulnar joint. And I highly recommend that you save images, document intraoperatively so that if something doesn't look right later, you can look back and say, did we get it right in the OR? What happened? Or maybe something wasn't as good as we thought. Uh, or um, maybe you realize you didn't get Im good imaging. You don't know what happened. So uh, avoid that situation. Carefully check and document motion and images at the end of your case to convince yourself that uh, you're, you have the motion you want and the joints uh, look congruent, especially at the uh, at the uh, wrist and the elbow. You can even consider getting full length forearm images to better assess your radial bow uh, by getting actual radiographs with cassette covers, old school. Because a lot of the C arm images don't have, especially the mini C arms, don't have the field of view that allows you to fully assess radial bow. Um, intraoperatively. Um, you have these sort of shortened field of views and you only see portions of the um, radius on any given image. So that brings us to point number five, be aware of compartment syndrome. So this is uncommon, but remember forearm fractures are one of the injuries that can lead to compartment syndrome. Tibia fractures, of course, are number one, but you can get them in forearm fractures. So when you treat these patients um, in the ED and you splint them, you've really got to be careful that they don't develop signs and symptoms of compartment syndrome. Uh, when you go to the OR, if something doesn't seem right, um, especially at the time of closure, uh, be aware that compartment syndrome can occur in these injuries and you may have to have a very um, heightened uh, sense of suspicion uh, in certain cases, especially higher energy uh, injuries. So let's just run through our five things you need to start doing now for adult forearm fractures. Image a joint above and below. Don't miss longitudinal instability. Number two, be more anatomic with your reconstruction than with other long bones. Um, number three, consider inspecting the radiocapitellar joint if that montagia lesion doesn't reduce. Despite what you've done with your ulna, you've got it the best you can. If it still doesn't reduce, consider inspecting the radiocapitellar joint. Number four, carefully check and document motion and images at the end of your case. And number five, be aware of compartment syndrome. So I hope that helps. And uh, best of luck managing these injuries. And uh, see you at the next podcast. Thanks.